I lost money, I lost money, I just, you don't see my losses. I don't usually see people excited leaving the tables in Vegas if they didn't put, put chips, chips on in the table. table. Yeah, that's it. You know, you, you make investments in different things. Sometimes they win, sometimes they don't. More losses than wins, but when you do win, you win so big. It, it overshadows it everything. Yeah, and we have, we have a saying in, in entrepreneurship and sales, uh, the faster you go through your no's, the faster you'll get to your yeses. But a lot of people don't want to go through the nose. And right in this process right here, right somewhere right here in the middle is where a lot of people say, it's too stressful. This is not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. But the people that know that success is just on the other side, if you keep the momentum going, it takes off. But a lot of people quit. Just don't be the person that quits too soon. What's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zapala here. Hey, Lindsay from Dallas, Texas. And we have another reaction video based on your comments and suggestions in the comment section below. We are going to respond. And this one is with 50 Cent. My reaction to 50 Cent on this interview with Brian J. Roberts, pretty interesting channel here. 50 Cent brought up some topics here on how he made money out of his $800 a month apartment, how he lost a lot of money, the conflict that happens to him universally to with, uh, with a lot of people, and also people being unhappy with your success, especially as you go from nowhere to somewhere and how you go from broke to bald. And so I'm excited about reviewing and my reaction on this interview with 50 Cent. By the way, we're looking forward, 50, to having you at one of our events here pretty soon. And so we're going to be studying a little bit here about 50 on his moves and how he basically became one of the biggest celebrity moguls, hip hop artist in our current generation. So let's take a look at this interview with 50 Cent. The, I brought an element to it that was, uh, was representation of the dangerous element in the inner cities, the environment, the things that go on. And it's because I was subjected to those things. I wrote music that mirrored that. And when you financially are in a great space and you move into a different stage in your actual life, you, it's, it's hard for you to continue to convey that, mm -hmm. you know. Interesting. You know, oftentimes uh, we have a rise to success and we may financially surpass a lot of our friends, our family, the hood we grew up in. And you're now living in the suburbs. You now have a car, you have no debt. You're taking your family out to some fancy spots and locations that only when you were grown, but you can only dream about eating out at. And sometimes you lose a disconnection with what Fiddy's trying to say. And uh, my job as uh, somebody that has had success is constantly making a connection with those who were in my shoes many, many moons ago. But uh, it's always the interesting conversation when, amongst other friends, the people I relate to the most, you know, even though these days I hang around some very fancy spaces and get invited to a lot of fancy parties, I relate more, not with the billionaires, I still relate to the $15 an hour guy. I don't know why, I still relate to the military veteran. I still relate to somebody who's a single father doing his very best to try to raise his family. I still relate to the blended family who's uh, got issues all the way around and still trying to fight and get through things. I still relate to the common Joe going through some financial struggles. So maybe I'm weird and different. What about you? For those of you who have made your money, who do you relate with and connect with still? Is it the billionaires and people in the level above you or do you still relate with the people that are part of the community you grew up and out of? Put it in the comment section below. I don't know if they know this, but I'm like, I'm, I'm like rich as a mother. <laughs> like, like, you know, it's a lot different from writing that from writing what I was at that time. You know, and, and at, the, at that momentum, with, at the peak of everything that's going on, I wasn't even feeling the adjustment because I already had more than I needed. Like, I left, when I left on the first tour, I did, um, my first run, the Rock the Mic tour, everything we did, I came back, I had $38 million in my account. Mm. And all I had was a, a one two-bedroom apartment that was $800 a month. So he went on a celebrity, artist, entrepreneurial deployment, is like what I like to call it. And he just focused in on rocking the mic on his tour. Multiple cities, multiple shows, back to back to back to back. Wasn't worried about spending anything, wasn't worried about acquiring anything. He just wanted to do his job. He had more than enough. I think some of the biggest problems that when you start making a little bit of money, you start having a little bit of success, your eyes get bigger and you got too much time on your hand to start spending money. I remember when we were deployed in the United States Marine Corps to our combat deployments, we came back with pockets full of cash. Why? Because we ain't spending money while we we're deployed. But the thing is, when we got back, we had time on our hands. We were shopping. We bought this car. We bought this, 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 that. 
Next thing you know, money is all over the place. If you're focused, guess what happens? If you're focused as an individual, your consciousness, you're focused on your goals, your dreams, your purpose, guess what? You will not be foolish with your finances. You'll be a little bit more fearless because you know how hard it took to get there. So if you don't spend it, you know the IRS is going to take it. Mm -hmm. So I needed the expenses. What a good reason to start spending your money. I completely, totally relate. It's one of the reasons I bought a Rolls Royce from a former NBA player. I've got a couple clips of it right here. But uh, yeah, we needed the expenses. There's some steak dinners you got to take people to. There's some fancy restaurants you got to celebrate with your team with. There's some trips you got to take with your organization. It has some team building exercise because those are tax deductions. By the way, notice that those aren't just expenses. Those are tax deductible events. Buying your dream car, taking your team to exotic location. We're about to take our guys to Paris and Monaco here in the next few weeks. Why? That's a tax deductible event. Otherwise, if you don't spend it and put it in motion, guess what the IRS takes us? Think about this right quick. If you start making money and you need tax deductions, why does the IRS give you tax deductions for spending money? Why? Because as an entrepreneur, let's break it down. You spend money on air travel. You spend money on hotel. You spend money on wait staff. You spend money in in restaurants, therefore a whole cycle of money. Therefore that restaurant needs supplies, they need food, they need staff, they need resources. That creates sales tax, that creates revenue, that creates income tax for the people that they employ. These people then buy homes, these people then buy cars. So you as an entrepreneur, guess what your job is? Not to hoard things, it is to make money flow because money is nothing more than just that. It is a tool to help not only yourself, but those around you. Stuff like that different things like I was just into it like you know even at that point you want everybody to be with you right because you're enjoying everything you kind of you don't want to be I don't want I never wanted to be someone different I wanted to be a better version of me I love it man who wants to be a next best version of themselves if that's you put in the comment section below I'm developing into the next best version of myself I'm developing into the next best version of myself if that's you you're watching this right now put it in the comment section below like to have not have the restraints that I had you know, and when you come up with our finances, it seems like the biggest restraint and uh, it makes you make that financial or, or money focus. Mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes people say that uh, money can't buy you happiness. Well, money gives you access so therefore you can discover the next best version of yourself. So you have a platform to exercise, you have a platform to grow. And, uh, and sometimes people say, well, Matt, you know, money isn't everything. You're right. It's not everything, but it's a whole lot of things that money does uh, allow you to become the next best version of yourself. Try it without money. You'll have a harder time. Try it with money. You'll have access. So coming, coming where you came from and then getting to where you were, you know, like you talk about this in the book too, sometimes the hardest part about success is actually sustaining it. Yeah. So how in the world did you manage to parlay all of that success? By the way, for some of you who had some success, I oftentimes get messages from people on these uh, videos. People say, Matt, you know, uh, I've been working hard for one, two, three, four, five years. I haven't really made a lot of money yet. Well, listen, man, if you're working that hard as an entrepreneur, if you're really putting in the heart and the success, here, here's a challenge, though, when you're coming up. Sometimes you have a little bit of success, you get cocky. You have a little bit of success, you get relaxed. Sometimes you have a little bit of success, you spend a lot of money. Sometimes you have a lot of success because nobody's your boss anymore. You are your own boss. Sometimes you let your standards down. You get comfortable. And so therefore, instead of you actually making money, you're making money, but you're spending it too soon before you actually get any momentum built up in your business. One of the bracelets I used to wear before I broke it was a bracelet by Damon John. We interviewed Damon John in one of his books was called The Power of Broke. When you are working with the power of broke, you're engaging the power of broke. You don't want to look at the bank accounts. You don't want to listen to distraction. You're just focused on rising up. And when you're in that position of, of not seeing your bank accounts and you one day look up years later, boom, oh my gosh, I got 100,000, 200,000, I got a million dollars in there, I got $5 million in there. That's because you engaged the power of broke. If you have no success three, four, five years in, either you got too, too comfortable, you didn't allow momentum to succeed or worse, you're probably not cut out to be an entrepreneur. You're probably more cut out to be more of an employee or at best an intrapreneur. Success, given where you came from, mm -hmm given the temptations of the lifestyle, most of which you don't mm. participate in. How, how did you come to develop this understanding of all these different components that are necessary for one to not just succeed, 
but then sustain and, and grow that success. Well, I, mean, know, I imagine they weren't teaching accounting and oh, all these absolutely. other things. Uh, Always no. something to learn. Man. And I lost money. I lost money. I just, you don't see my losses. And by the way, I've lost a lot of money. I've lost some money through bad partnerships. I lost some money by being stupid. I've lost a lot of money by partying with people that brought zero value to my life and woke up the next weekend to regret it just to do it again on Thursday night. Did that for many, many years. You lost a lot of money because you don't exactly have a purpose for it. You had the wrong people in your corner when it came to money. People giving you advice. You got distracted. You got your money here. You got your money here. You got your money here. You're attempting to build multiple streams of income too early, too fast in your rise up then you lose money that way. By the way, there's a great video for you to watch here why a lot of people that give you wisdom and knowledge about building multiple streams of income is false and why you shouldn't follow it too soon in your career. But let's take a look at why 50 lost money and what he did. I don't usually see people excited leaving the, the tables in Vegas if they didn't put, put chips, chips on the table. Yeah, that's it. You know, you, you make investments in different things. Sometimes they win, sometimes they don't. More losses than wins, but when you do win, you win so big, it, it overshadows it makes up for everything. Yeah. Sometimes if you keep rocking and rolling, and we have, we have a saying in, in entrepreneurship and sales, the faster you go through your nose, the faster you'll get to your yeses. We gave a formula the other day in our office for my brand new guys, how to make $100,000 a year in the field of insurance. And uh, we basically calculate if you even have a 30% closing ratio, if you just went through 270 no's and you finally get to your 80 yeses, you'll make $100,000 a year. But a lot of people don't want to go through the no's. I'll give you an example. Here's a chart of our YouTube channel. We upload videos to our channel. We upload videos to our channel. We upload videos to our channel. Listen, no success. We keep uploading, keep uploading, keep uploading. A lot of L's, a lot of L's, a lot of L's, a lot of L's. Next thing you know, boom, hockey stick time. Success, right? It takes off. And right in this process right here, right somewhere right here in the middle is where a lot of people say, it's too stressful. This is not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. But the people that know that success is just on the other side, if you keep the momentum going, it takes off. But a lot of people quit. Just don't be that person that quits too soon. You know, and that, that's that been the journey, the experience. And then when I, I shift to do things in a different way, like people look now and say, like he's, I'm, they're feeling momentum. Of, thing, of me in television now, right? But this Stop. I started this years, years ago. ago. Yeah, by the way, what a universal principle we just learned here. We just did a reaction video to Rick Ross about how many years he took writing things for free, creating verses, creating hooks, doing things for free for other people just to get his name out there, just to get some momentum in his career to basically front load the price of success he needed to have for long-term success in his business. It took him 10 years. Look at what 50 says right now. I did all these things for 10 years, took L's, took L's, took L's, all these different losses in 10 years, and boom, took off. And next thing you know, people say, oh, 11th year in, 12th year, we knew you'd be successful. No, you didn't. You're lying. You're the first person hating on me. You're the first person not supporting my work. You're the first person dogging me out and, and, uh, and, and dropping fake news of me on social media. Now in the 11th year, 12th year, 13th year, now I'm successful. Now you say I'm an overnight success, that I'm so lucky you knew that I'd always make it. No, you didn't. But what do you say, though? You keep quiet. You keep humble. You stay hungry. You keep developing. You keep dancing with momentum until you get to the next level, until everything you dreamt for, everything you asked for starts to compound. And better yet, it starts to compound for those around you because those that were willing to pay the price around you in that journey with you, guess what? They are able to now enjoy the fruits of your labor because they stuck with you. Those are your ride or dies, not only through the good times, but more so through the tough times. I did, I raised $200 million, we broke it into 10 pitches, we sold domestic rights to Lionsgate, and went out and sold the international territories as we could with those, with those films. But I did it twice. Then... Here, oh man, he, listen man, 50 is dropping you some game. He's so much evolution from just being a rapper. He learned and studied business. He learned and studied the movie business. Look at his language here. He studied, he had people in his corner, counsel. Are you the type of person to have counselors in your corner? Let me share with you a proverb written by King Solomon, the wisest and richest king who ever lived. He talked about counselors heavily in the book of Proverbs. Let's check this out. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, it reads like this. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors. So my question to you, who's been in your ear? Who's been in your corner? Who's been getting in your head? Are the right people? having conversation with you? Is your multi-million dollar dreams torpedoed and sabotaged 
with people who never lived theirs. A multi-million dollar dream cannot be made with a $15 an hour work ethic and people that have a $15 work ethic around you, giving you counsel and giving you advice about what you should do and you shouldn't do. So 50 must have had some wise people in his corner. I wonder who they were. Maybe I asked him in a future interview with 50. Come on, man, I'm just speaking into life. The relationship with Barry and Stan at- Barry and Stan and in Lionsgate. Is and where the rights from BMF came So from. there it is. He you built, he built. Like so in other words, he worked to earn and build the relationship of somebody at Lionsgate. He just mentioned those names. Because here's how trust develops. Trust says, I'm going to do something. And then the other part of that is I actually do it. And that starts building a brick by brick by brick. You keep saying things and you do it. You keep saying things and you do it. You keep saying things and you do it. And that lends another brick on top of another brick until a bridge is formed. Oftentimes, so many people are out there talking about what they're about to do. I'm going to talk about what I'm doing. I'm going to talk about what I'm doing. I'm da, 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 and never do anything. And then you wonder why people don't trust you. And then you wonder why you don't have any credibility. And then you wonder what's worse, you don't have any money to show for all the efforts about you declaring, 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 but no action or worse, no follow through. So whatever endeavors you got going, who's your, in your ear in terms of your counselors and the type of work are you doing and actually getting results done to start building that bridge that you need to get you to the next financial level of your life. And by the way, the worst person to follow this advice was me. I've, I blew this up so many different times because thinking when I was making money after the military, I started getting involved in the insurance business. I started making a lot of money in my early 20s, late 20s, started getting cocky, started getting arrogant, didn't want to listen to anybody. The first person to listen to this advice is myself. I'm speaking to me, everybody. I'm no better, no different than everybody else. I'm an average guy. I'm a common Joe. No fancy last name, no college degree. The first person that made a bunch of these mistakes was yours truly here, host of the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel. These things are happening so far back that I damn to try and catch up now. You planted the seed for this six years ago, was six, it? Well, the yeah. rice was about six years ago. The, it took four and a half years for uh, us to get to this point. I sold this to stars four and a half years ago. Hmm. This is why it, it feels the way it feels coming out. Because I've been promoting it for four and a half years. He promoted it, he manifested it, and made you it know, happen. Like he spoke been, it into life. The audience already knows what BMF is, but they, they know for them, BMF is blow money fast. Oh, apparently, that's what it stands for, BMF, blow money fast? Okay, cool. Because uh, they know that- Because they know that the heyday of them financially, Meech and Terry and them being in that position and what they could do. Okay, I guess that's something else we gotta check out, well, um, BMF. When you look at the, the origin story, and you go back to Detroit and the family, like how the decisions- Is it that or is it Black Mafia family? It's probably Black Mafia family in Detroit. But that was, a, that was a killer movie uh, about BMF in, 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 in Detroit, if that's what he's referring to. See, guys, I don't do any research or um, watch these videos before I actually watch them. So, therefore, if, if you've never seen this interview for the very first time, neither have I. We're all enjoying this together, experiencing this for the very first time together. So, that's to Sean Stars. To Sean Stars, not the Black Mafia family. Because that's about a, 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 oh, it is. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Exactly. Um, by the way, I, I knew about that because I grew up in Chicago. So we always know about guys from the D. What up, Doe? That's where, uh, that's where that saying came from in, in Detroit. What up, Doe? But we knew about that. I knew about that growing up in Chicago. And so uh, th those are some serious times in the, uh, in the, the 80s, early 90s. Uh, BMF, even we heard about that in Chi-Town. When you see it happening and the innocence of a 15-year-old child making the decision, when they're not necessarily responsible for their actions because they're a minor at that point, and simplifying things, saying, how, what is the issue? We don't have the money for the rent or for mortgage. Yeah. And uh, your dad is simplifying things, so he's going to work, he's coming home, he's just giving your mom his whole check and telling her to handle everything. And because the car broke down, they ain't got enough money for the mortgage. So you go in the neighborhood, you do what you can do in the street, you come back and give you, your parents the money. But that doesn't work because they're Christian, good Christian people. So, so this conflict that is universal conflict, that I think that, that uh, is relatable across all different cultures if they just believe in God or Christianity. It's a struggle there that's happening early on. In this but it's pretty interesting. What? Top of universal conflict have you experienced with you, money, family, your faith, your neighborhood, 
growing up, coming up? What type of conflict have you been wrestling with? And uh, this conflict here, I've seen this in my life play out. I've seen it in other people's lives play out. I've seen so many people out there, good Christian people going to church. I'll pray to God for a blessing, pray to God for a blessing. They see, you know, they get a blessing, but they don't know what to do with the blessing. They blow the blessing and they send her back to square one. Or they say, it's evil for you to be rich. It's, e it's easier for a camel to go to an eye of a needle than a rich man goes in heaven. They twist that verse in scripture. Therefore, it's an excuse not to rise up out of the hood, rise up out of the current situation and stay comfortable because God wants me to be just content and God's going to provide. But yet God's been providing you an opportunity, banging on the door. Hey, listen to this. Listen to this guy. Listen to this YouTube channel. Listen to this podcast. Listen to this influencer. Listen to this person trying to get people up and out of the hood. But that's a universal conflict. Why? Because my pastor told me it's better to be broke than it is purport, which is, by the way, religion. It's not in scripture. And so many people try to twist it, so therefore you don't rise up, and so therefore they don't have to rise up. But what universal conflict are you going through right now that uh, you'd love to address, and you'd love for me to address and react to and answer potentially? Please put it in the comment section below. I would love to know what you're thinking. It's, it's, I look at, when they say that, it's because they're looking at me. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I, I mm -hmm. know what it is. So I look at it and I go, okay, I got that. But there's, there's look, there's going to be people unhappy with the success that you have regardless. You know, you got, they, they'll, without knowing who you are, individual could look and just judge you. Yeah, yeah, I don't like that. I don't like you without knowing who you actually are. So some of you guys say, you know, I'm just going to focus on my business. If you focus on my grind, save and invest, make, my money work for me and mix, you know, it does. You say, I'm going to work until my haters shut up. Well, news flash for you on that. My personal experience. And I think the many experience of anybody who's had some form of rise up and come up story and rags, the richest type of story, uh, or, or riches to rags back up to rags, the riches again. I think the story is as much as you think that the haters stop when you are successful. I'm sorry, man, they might be quiet for a minute, but you're definitely going to attract another level of haters. You're going to definitely attract another level of doubters. You're going to attract another level of people that just don't like you. They don't like your hair. They don't like your skin. They don't like the way you talk. They don't like the books that you read. They don't like the music that you create. They don't like the house that you live in. Oh, freaking well. So stop comparing yourself to other people and just make yourself, the people that you love and care about, happy. You become the next best version of yourself. You get access to people that you love and care about, things that they never had beforehand because of your hard work now that they do have. And if people are going to judge you, oh, well, control what you can control. I, say, I don't like that. He had that diamond goat mm -hmm. on his neck. Why did he put that there? You got to be a certain kind of person because he, had, he liked diamonds. Mm -hmm. All right? And then they could just assume that you anything they would like to register negative, they can just register it negative. Some people, they have the, uh, the trait of, like, let's say the person's across the street, they look at you, they don't like you from across the street. Some people feel the need to go across the street to say, why I'm a good person. I don't give a f <laughs> I genuinely don't give a f about how those people feel about me across the street because they don't care about me. Is it okay for me not to care about people not that don't care about me? By the way, just so you guys know, I read all the comments and we try to get back to as many comments as we can. And just so you know, I read all the comments on all my social media profiles. Some people say don't read this, the social media comments. Actually, I do. Do you know why? Because I'm just trying to thicken my skin for the next level. Because I know at another level, there's going to be another devil. There's going to be somebody out, out, out there that's going to try to take me down. Somebody's going to try to take you down at your next level. And for me, instead of engaging with the trolls, I respond with grace, with forgiveness, with a different level of perspective, with a different level of humility than they would expect me to do so because... As, as many people try to point fingers at me and try to point fingers at you, doesn't mean I need to get back in that finger pointing game. It's not about who's better. It's all about us getting better and not accepting excuses that no politician, no person is going to say, hey, here's a blessing. Here's, here's millions of dollars. Go fix your problem. No, that's not going to happen. You got to pull yourself up out of the mix that you're in. The same shovel that got you in the situation that you're in ain't going to be the same shovel to get you out of it. So... In the meantime, don't worry about comparing and, and competing with other people. You just need to compare and compete yourself with you and the current version of you and evolve into the next best version of yourself. That this time next month, you're better. This time two months later, you're better, better. This time next month, next month, next month, you're better, better, better. You get what I'm saying? So can't get no time for negative comments and people with negativity in their life. And by the way, guess who negative people hang around with? Other negative 
people. All they have to do is complain and point fingers and lay, lay the blame, now hide the shame because at the end of the day, they don't want to get involved in winning the money game. But you just do you, man. And uh, make sure you follow the right people that allows you to do you. I mean, like the simple things, like if you look and you go, if it would be entertaining for them to see me in Christ. Of course it's entertaining right. for them to see in Christ because they want to see you down. So if you saw that and you go. That's why TMZ why exists. You, That's why tabloids you exist. A who would like you to see you under the worst circumstances you could be under. I remember uh, when Robert Kiyosaki, my personal hero as a man, as a United States Marine, as an entrepreneur, as an author, I remember when he got wrapped up in uh, filing bankruptcy for the rich dad companies, which is a legal strategy to lower your debt or reassign debt or negotiate your debt. And everybody could not wait for even a Robert Kiyosaki to go down. And a guy that's got the best selling personal finance book in the history of personal finance books, people still could not wait for this guy to go down. And couldn't believe it because if they see him down, guess what? Everybody that knew they were supposed to do something but didn't do it, they justify their inaction. You see that guy there, Robert Kiyosaki? The reason why we didn't do what he's supposed to do because we knew he was a scam. He was a sham to begin with. And 20 years later, he filed bankruptcy. See, we knew we were supposed to do something because we would no further be a farther ahead. But that's not the truth, though. Robert Kiyosaki is well ahead of a lot of people because he's following his work. Now he's got to live different opinions of what's going on in the American economy today. But... He's definitely walking the walk. He's just not one of those guys that are talking to talk. What about you, though? Will you be the person that goes down that when you rise, you will stumble? It's going to happen. And when you quit, when you stumble, guess what? Every one of your haters, every one of your doubters, they're right. And you just prove them correct if you quit. But if you rise up, shake yourself up, dust yourself off, and get back on the saddle, and you get to the next level, you keep shutting them up. And you keep proving your philosophy to pursue your dreams and your goals proper and correct what do you want to do that being said guys let me know your thoughts your comments your feedback do you agree with me you don't agree with me please put it in the comment section below if you haven't seen some of the other reaction videos we've done in the past please check out these two right here as well before i let you go what are your suggestions what other reactions to other people being interviewed on other shows would you love for me to react to and give my two cents on please put it in the comment section below if you've been enjoying these please consider hitting subscribe and liking this video too as well. If you're not been enjoying these, I appreciate you guys just stopping by to say hello and say you don't like me. Put in the comment section below too as well. I promise you, I'll give you plenty more content to troll me on. Some will get bitter and others will get better. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your mighty smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be mighty smart today.